Today, we've got a bit of a special one for you. We're gonna show you how to fit a motorized tonneau lid kit. Basically, if you've got a tonneau lid, like a hard fiberglass lid or a plastic lid, a lot of the uh, VTs, v VXs, VY, VZ utes, Malu utes, the VEs and stuff, um, the VAs, the BFs. So instead of having your strut gas struts lifting it up for you, you can now do it via motorization. And we're gonna show you exactly how to fit it. Thanks to the guys down at AKI, Australian Custom Imports. Streak is the brand. It's the uh, kit that you can buy. Retails for 650 bucks for the complete kit. Comes with some insane brackets. Can be used in almost any type of ute application. But once you see it working, you can use it in more than just a hard lid ute. You can use it on your boot lids. You can use it on anything that requires motorization. This kit comes complete from A to Z. It's got all your wiring, your relays, everything. We're gonna show you how we uh, fit it into a ute. Then you get to watch it working. So let's go and have a look at how the professionals do it. I said, right. Welcome to this week's episode of Insane Hands. On this job, I'm actually gonna need another pair of Insane Hands. Here's a pair I prepared earlier. Thank you. Cool. What we're gonna fit here is a motorized Torno cover kit. Did I say that right? You did. It's a mouthful. No, it's, it's still room for more. Dun, 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 dun. What we have here, and these are pretty damn cool and can be used for more than just the Torno kits. Streaker, that's from AKI, Australian Custom Imports. They've made one of the coolest little kits available on the market. Basically, it's a dual kit, so you've got two motors. We'll be placing these one either side of the back of the ute. We'll be re getting rid of the struts once it's finished. And through the either the factory remote boot release key or what we'll be doing for this one is fitting a separate switch because it doesn't have the remote key feature. Um, we'll just be a you know, flick of a switch, the hard lid comes up and flick of a switch, hard lid comes back down and it holds it down so you don't have to worry about latching it back down again. Pretty damn cool. Let's show you what's in the kit. The most important thing of all, the installation guide. That's going to be pretty cool. Make sure you follow that. So, but if you get stuck, keep watching this and we'll show you how you do it. Then if we open her up, uh, this is where it gets really, really cool. First, you get your bag of accessories. Everything you're going to need to fit this is all in here. So, AKI really nailed it with this one. They give you everything you need from terminals to bolts to wiring, Relays, fuses. Switches, yeah, that's bloody awesome. And next up, these are the pizza resistance. Check out these brackets. This is a universal bracket. Basically, we've got threaded, or I won't say threaded studs, but we've got a threaded piece of metal on the bottom here. That'll sit on the bottom of the ute. It'll be bolted in from underneath, just in case your battery dies, or for some reason, something goes wrong with one of the motors. You need to be able to slide under the car with a ratchet, undo a couple of bolts, and that way the whole kit will still lift up, and then you can service whatever's gone horribly wrong. So hopefully nothing does go horribly wrong, but unfortunately uh, if you've got a big, because we're going to be fitting a bit of an audio system back here, we're probably going to get quite a few flat batteries happening. So we've got to make sure that if anything does go wrong and we lose power for some reason, you can lift these with ease. If we had have mounted them to the original brackets, if power dies, there's no way of making these motors move. Because they're a worm driven motor, they're not going to be able to move. So Once they're, once they're down, they're locked. Yeah, so the, the advantage of these is if something does go wrong and you lose power for any reason, unbolt these, up she comes, and then you can service whatever needs to be done. So, let's keep going through this kit. There you go, it comes with two brackets. One for each side. So you drilled and obviously if, you've, uh, if you need to make your own holes, you can drill what you Extra holes. Because they are a multi-purpose kit, you can fit them into basically any kind of vehicle. So, you just once you do all your measurements, we'll show you what measurements you need to do to start with as well. This is where the magic happens. This is cool having an extra pair of insane hands. Look at that. It's a 12 inch linear actuator. These things lift, is it 100 kilos each? Plenty of grunt to lift the, the tonneau cover, no problem at all. They got like a little ball joint in there as well, almost so it can swivel around a bit as well, which is pretty damn cool. And obviously the, the, the way you would mount these would be, and the way we will mount them, is in here, off the bracket, Sitting like this, connected to the top of the tonneau kit, and that'll push it up out of the way. You've got to make sure when you mount these that they are on the angle to start with. If you have them sitting flat, it's going to want to push that way. You need it to actually push up. So, very yeah. important the way you mount it. Oh, get, keep coming this out. 
keep coming. That's great English. We'll keep, keep coming. coming this out. Out. Bit of Clayton there. So the first thing you need to do is take a measurement from the top of your ute tray to the top of the tornado lid. Yoink. What we've got here is 83 centimetre lift. So once we've got the motors in place and we've lifted it all up, we'll then measure it again and we'll see if we've lost any height. Now, being that it's a universal kit, you might lose 5, 10 centimetres, but 5, 10 centimetres back here on something this high, you're not going to notice the difference, especially someone for as short as me, it's not an issue. That's about so 5 centimetres there. From there to there, yeah. Punteenth. Punteenth. It's a smidgen, and in case you want to know what a smidgen is, it's a small pigeon. We measure things in small pigeons around here. All right, let's start with the location of the brackets. Yeah. We're not going to put the tub liner back in this car. Okay. So basically he doesn't want the tub liner in because we're going to be doing a, a big audio system at a later date. So the first thing you need to do is basically figure out where we're going to place the brackets. We're going to have one on this side and one on that side. And then what we'd like to do is have the motors on the inside. So if I can somehow hold that without dropping it. The motor will sit somewhere about there and we'll make our bracket to go up top on the tornado lid as well. First things first, we don't want the motors to interfere with the width of the actual wheel arches, so that way you don't lose any, any distance. So we want them to sort of like run parallel with the wheel arch itself. So we place it about there. Then you just get a texture and mark a line across so we know that we're running straight with the wheel arch. And then from there we'll take a measurement from the back here. Probably we go about 420. I'll make a mark there. Brett, if you can do the same on your side, just make a mark from your wheel arch and go 420 on the other side. So what we're doing here now is we're just measuring from the back of the ute, using it as a reference point, measuring 420 millimetres forward, so we know exactly that the brackets will be on the same point at each side. All good? All good. Now I think it's time to drill. So you've marked your little holes as well where the holes are? marked the holes. So because you've got your two little holes there, put two holes in the ground, we'll start drilling through, but before you drill through, get underneath, get a torch, make sure you're not going to be drilling through any brake lines or fuel lines or anything like that. So if you'll kindly pass me the torch. Yeah, have a look here, the wheel arch is nice and open. Where we're going to make our holes, there's absolutely nothing in the way. So I'll double check the other side, I'll just make sure that's fine as well. And we're right to drill. When drilling holes, always drill a primer hole first. We use the 1 8 drill bit just as our first little pilot hole. So we'll run that through the floor first, then we're going to upchange it to the 3 8 or the 9 mil drill bit, because that's going to give us enough room for the bolts to move around a bit inside, so give you a bit of play. And then we're ready to bolt this kit in. So let's do some drilling. We've now got our 3 8 or 9 mil drill bit. And if I grab one of the bolts, I can just make sure that it's the right size, although it should be. Here's a bolt I prepared earlier. Now these bolts out of the kit, they're really long, so depending on where you put them through, once you know where they've got to go, you can trim them down to whatever size you need. Moves around a bit, beautiful. Now we put a large washer on there as well, so that way it helps disperse the weight a bit underneath. These things are ready to bolt on. What do you say, we'll bolt them on? Let's bolt them on. We'll place that there. All right, Brett's going to hold the bracket for us. I'm going to get underneath, and I've got my torch, got my ratchet, got my bolts. Let's bolt this sucker in. <laughs> 